Hi, I'm Southampton Town Supervisor Jay Schneiderman, and welcome to Talk of the Town, where we take a close look at issues affecting our community here in the town of Southampton. And one of the most perplexing issues, perhaps, is affordable housing. With the high cost of land and the high cost of living in this area, we have seen more and more of our workforce displaced uh, to places further west. And you see it. You see it every morning as workers commute in to our area. You see it in people trying to find ways to live in the area, sometimes overcrowding, sometimes living in substandard housing like basement apartments. Um, and the town has been working really hard on trying to fix this problem, but it is not an easy problem to fix. Um, and we're looking at different solutions and we're working uh, with different agencies. And so today I'm joined by Gwen O'Shea, who is here. Welcome, Gwen. Thank um, you. Gwen works uh, is the director of CDC Long Island as the Community Development Corporation of Long Island, and we'll learn about that in a moment, what that is, and, and Kara Back, who is our Director of Housing and Community Development. So welcome to Talk of the Town. Thank you. Um, so let's start with you, Gwen. Sure. Um, I know you've gotten involved with the town because uh, we partnered up on a grant application to uh, help create something called ADUs, Accessory Dwelling Units. So um, why don't we start, just tell us a little bit about who CD, uh, CDCLI is, sure. what C CDCLI is, and uh, a little bit about this program. Absolutely. Well, first, thanks for having me. It's great to be here with both of you. Um, as you mentioned, I run an organization called Community Development Corporation of Long Island. We have been serving the region for, geez, close to 54 years now, really doing everything around housing and home, recognizing that for all of us, you know, our, our foundation is our home. We need a safe, comfortable place. It's our, it's our safe haven, right? When we go home from work, when we come home from school, there's always a, a place to go that provides you some reprieve, and that should be your home. And we believe strongly that everyone should have uh, access to a safe and affordable home, recognizing that's defined in many different ways, right? Defined by your income, defined by your family size. And so um, we've worked throughout Long Island communities, like I said, for over 53 years, providing different housing options. And now we're thrilled to be working with the town and appreciate your partnership on addressing some of the issues that you opened with, which is this lack of housing. and. Um, the opportunity that we're working on is um, an ADU plus one program, which is accessory dwelling units. Um, it's a program that the state has funded, um, put in significant amount of money um, to really help support municipalities that have existing codes that do allow for accessory dwelling units. And it's really, quite frankly, a fantastic program provides grant money, forgivable uh, loans to homeowners who are financially constrained but interested in either bringing an existing apartment, like you mentioned, there are a, a high number of perhaps existing uh, units that aren't up to code yet, so you can either use these funds to bring an existing unit to code, or you could um, actually construct a new uh, accessory dwelling unit on your property, again, as long as it meets the requirements of the town code. So, Kara, let me ask you, um, this idea of an accessory apartment, whether it's in a garage or a basement or a portion of the house, um, why don't we have more of them? What are the obstacles? Why aren't people building accessory apartments? It's additional income for them. Why, why do we see so few of these? Um, so one of, one of the um, issues, the reasons why we don't have uh, so many of these in the town is they, they cost money to put in. And one of the, pr the, the uh, great things about this program is this will help to people uh, to afford the cost of placing an EDU in their home. Um, the, the program will allow for someone to borrow up to $125,000. After 10 years, if they remain in the program, the loan is forgivable. So it's a terrific way for somebody now to afford the cost of putting an ADU. And these, these So ADUs, say that again. So let, let's say I were to build uh, an apartment in a portion of my house. The government would pay up to how much? $125,000. $125,000 to build out that apartment. Right. And as long as, and I'll collect the rent. Yes. For the next, as for 10 years, if I stay in the program, and then I won't have to pay the 120000 back. That's I get correct. to keep. I get to keep all the furnishings, all that apart, that whole new apartment. Yes, that loan, that original loan. And can I continue to, to rent it out and earn income from it? That's correct. Yep. 
So that original loan of $125,000 after a 10-year period, when, this, when that unit stays in the program, that's forgivable. So what does stay in the program mean? Stay in the program means that the, under our town code, um, the tenant has to income qualify. That means that the tenant cannot earn more than 130% of the area median income. Uh, we're going to place a chart up on the screen now to show you what that is. For one person, that's approximately $146,000. For somebody, that, a family of four, it could be up to $203,000. So um, it's it's significant amount of money. Um, under the plus one program, the owner of the property cannot make more than 100% of the area median income. So a family of four, that's $156,000 currently. So, um, and they will go through the qualifying process um, and if they're eligible, they could be eligible for up to that grant up to $125,000. Now, the rent under our program also has to be what we consider an affordable rent. So if it's a one-bedroom apartment, the rent can be $2,030 uh, a monthly uh, currently. Um, and if it's a two-bedroom, it's uh, up to $2,300 currently. So also significant amounts um, that, that we see there. The great thing is too, Kara, is that with this program, the homeowner can actually live in the unit. So if you have a senior that's living by themselves that may have a three-bedroom house, let's say, and they're interested in renting the three-bedroom part, they can live in the new accessory dwelling unit to increase the amount of income that they see coming into the house. I mean, it's a really a great program that gets at a lot of what we hear from homeowners, right? You have many seniors that are house rich, but you know, income, they're struggling. This is an opportunity to create greater income for those individuals. Many families that may have a young child in the household or you know, a child that's looking, not a child anymore, a young adult, you know, that's not ready to, doesn't have the, the means to buy a home because it is so expensive, they could live in the accessory dwelling unit you know, within the property. So it's really a great way to expand the number of units within the town and ensure that the facade and the uniqueness and the beauty of the town and its single family homes is protected because you're using accessory dwelling units you know, to create those new units. Yeah, it doesn't change the character of the neighborhood, um, which is one of the, you know, the great benefits. Also with the cost of land out here, these accessory units, to build, to build apartments, you, know, you have the cost of infrastructure, the cost of building roads and bringing in utilities and things like that. This is a way to create more housing without those extra costs. Absolutely. So um, if, if, I'm, if I'm a homeowner and let's say I am within that income and let's say I have a garage that I don't really, don't really need, right? Now, or maybe the area above a garage, you know, could be added a second story. Um, and I want to take advantage of this plan. Um, I guess I have a, a, a couple of questions because a lot of people hate bureaucracy. It's like, <laughs> oh my God, I'll never get the building permits. I don't want to go in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Or, um, so the role of CDC Long Island is you actually take them through the entire process, right? From beginning to end. And so once they qualify and they agree to the program, you do all the work, basically, right? We do all the work. We do not do the construction ourselves. You know, we're really excited to be working with local contractors, you know, that are um, insured and permitted and certified to be working within the town. Um, individuals that may know a contractor, as long as they meet some of the criteria related to insurance and, again, you know, town compliance, they can participate in the program, but we can be as involved as a homeowner wants. And we know for a lot of individuals who may not have done any construction on their property in a long time, it can feel very overwhelming. To your point about the bureaucracy, also very overwhelming. Um, but we really have created a streamlined application. But you'll we'll handhold, right? Absolutely. You'll working with, and we, you know, we want to be, and we are good partners with the town, right? So the town is doing a fantastic job working with us, providing information about all the different compliance pieces that need to be met, all the code pieces that need to be met, and really helping um, ensure that we can get these applications, you know, over the finish line and get these accessory mm -hmm. dwelling units constructed. But when and you say code, and I, I think you're talking about like the fire safety codes and things like that, but we also have zoning codes and they're somewhat limited, right, Kara? Like not everybody um, can under the current code build an accessory apartment. 
they might not have a big enough piece of land, or maybe they're in an area where the population's a little more dense and they don't, don't qualify under the current program. Though the board has been talking about changing the program a little bit so that more people can qualify, right? That, that's correct. So under our, our current code, um, the lot size must be 30,000 square feet unless you're in a census designated place where there's less than 500 people per square mile, then the lot can be as low as 20,000 square feet. We're working right now to kind of tweak that maybe um, to allow for, for more ADUs. Um, the, also right now, the owner must live uh, in the, uh, either in the dwelling unit or the accessory unit year-round, as well as the tenant. The tenant must also live year-round in the, um, the, the accessory unit or the dwelling unit. Yeah, those are, those are really important points because I know you have many individuals that own properties out here that may not reside in them year-round. The person that owns the home has to live there, that has to be their primary residence to qualify for these funds, and the renter also has to live in that property year round and we as the compliance agency will be reviewing that annually to make sure that the homeowner and the renter mm -hmm. are in compliance. And when you say 20,000 square feet, that's half an acre. Yes, correct. So what if somebody has a third of an acre? So if they have a, a third of an acre, they can go to the ZBA right now and ask the ZBA for a variance to be able to build. So and our ZBA I think has been very um, you know, uh, willing to, to, to work with people. But that is also something we're looking at changing so that you could build an accessory apartment on a smaller lot. Because the smaller lots tend to be downtown, uh, you know, in the more areas that are more walkable, you know, walk to um, a grocery store or walk to a bank, walk to a post office, whatever. Correct. It might be walk to a bus stop. Um, and that's something that CDC will help through that kind of process. If, if there is somebody who does want to build and they, uh, you know, want to go through uh, the ZBA process uh, because they do have a smaller lot, CDC will help them through that process. Now, what if, Carol, what if somebody doesn't qualify income-wise, but they still would love to create an accessory apartment? I mean, we do need affordable apartments and we have a serious lack of places for our workforce to live. So in working with CDCLI, uh, they will let us know if somebody has an interest, they don't qualify right. income-wise, they're above that 100% AMI, which like I mentioned uh, for a family of four is $156,000 right now, they would refer them to my department. Um, my department does have some funding under the newly established Community Housing Fund um, and under the, the housing fund, the community housing fund, we are allowed to use that money for accessory apartments. And we're going to establish a program where we could also lend money, um, you know, for those accessory apartments. In addition, if the apartment should go over the cost of $125,000, we will be working with CDCLI to maybe also supplement that cost. So, um, Gwen, we applied together for this grant and it, um, to New York State in a partnership. Uh, this was Governor Hochul's program, I believe, and uh, I know this was a, a big focus for the governor in terms of creating more affordable housing. And there was some debates about how the best way to do that was, but this is really uh, providing financial assistance to the municipality, directly to homeowners, to create these apartments. Um, how much did we receive? It? So the town of uh, Southampton received $2 million. Uh, we received that, on our, to your point, our, through our partnership. Um, and as well, as you noted, the governor really um, had a focus on this, this program providing funds to municipalities that already allow for accessory dwelling units, right? So the idea is to move money and to create new affordable housing units where it can happen rather quickly, rather than having to go to any sort of legislative train change or policy changes. So the first award amount that went out was 20 million across New York State. There is almost $60 million allocated through the 2022-2023 New York State capital uh, budget to go out to municipalities across New York who are interested in developing accessory dwelling units. We would love to see this money be spent pretty quickly within the town because then that perhaps could allow us to apply for sure. additional funds uh, for homeowners here who are interested in creating those accessory so, dwelling units. So if an apartment costs, let's say, 100000 to build, this could provide for roughly 20 apartments. So we're not talking about hundreds of apartments or thousands of apartments, but 
maybe 20 families or individuals could take advantage of this program. If it's successful and we can get more money, um, and with our new fund as well, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, we could perhaps do, do more of these as well. So um, tell us a little bit about CDCLI and how you, know, you got involved in CDCLI, why this is interesting to you. Sure, um, that's, a, that's a great question, I appreciate it. Um, CDCLI, as I mentioned, is all about creating home and recognizing that home is defined differently for different individuals and families, but no matter how you define it, you should be able to have a home. Um, in a community that you desire to be a part of. And for me, I actually got connected with the organization um, after Superstorm Sandy. Uh, previously, I was running another health and human service organization that did a lot of work in um, disaster planning and recovery and relief. And as you all know, after Superstorm Sandy, the, the main impact was homes here on Long Island, uh, in particular on the South Shore. And we worked very closely with Community Development Corporation of Long Island. My predecessor, Marianne Garbin, mm -hmm. was on our executive committee committee um, and uh, in our work you know she had asked if I would be willing to join her board uh, and be part of um, sort of the governance and the oversight and the and the vision as a board you know undertakes uh, it was my pleasure to join and shortly after uh, we learned that Marianne would be retiring in 2016 and so um, I threw my hat in the ring to be the CEO there um, and joined the organization in March 2017 and um, was the best decision I ever made and I'm grateful to the board for um, appointing me to the position because the work that we do is so critical. You know, as you pointed out, here on Long Island, it is so ridiculously expensive. It's one of the most uh, expensive places to live uh, in the country, um, and it's also one of the most segregated places to live, and so opportunities are not provided to all individuals equitably, and we believe that, that uh, those opportunities should be, and so we work hard with municipalities, with individuals to really um, create and sustain homes so that their communities can thrive. That's great. And <clears throat> Kara, we, I know we've been working as a town to try to create additional opportunities. And it's bad. I mean, it's really bad, right? With the local wages, and some of them are seasonal. But, um, you know, you were mentioning before, like, area median income and what a family of three or four might what make the average family. And, and then you start to look at housing costs, whether it's to rent something or to purchase. And, you know, anybody can go online and try to find a place that they can afford. And um, once you put those filters in those search engines, is nothing comes up. There's nothing. Um, so it's a really bad situation. So the town has a, a lot of work ahead to do it. But the voters last November approved a, a surcharge on uh, real estate transfers. Can you tell us a little bit about that new program that's got the Community Housing Fund and um, what your hopes are, how, how we'll be able to use this new pot of money to make a difference? Sure. Okay. So we could talk a little bit about the um, Community Housing Fund, which, um, as you mentioned, was passed by the voters in November. Um, so the, the Community Housing Fund is a fund that is um, funded through a half a percent real estate tax. Um, when a buyer purchases property out here, in the town of Southampton, in addition to the 2% um, community uh, preservation fund tax, they will be paying a half a percent uh, community housing fund tax. And that half a percent goes into a designated fund to be used for affordable housing purposes. For things like uh, first-time homebuyer grants, uh, employer employee housing, to create affordable housing, uh, for uh, accessory dwelling units, ADU units. Um, these are things that the fund can be used for, um, you know, to, to help increase housing that is affordable throughout this that's time. Great. Yeah, that's great. So um, going back to the ADU program, mm -hmm. um, the one where we're working with uh, your organization on, um, we need to find people who want to um, participate so we can get these 20 units created. Um, so what are we doing besides this show to reach out and uh, how to, if maybe somebody's watching who's interested, um, how do they um, sign up for the program? 
Great question. So individuals can go onto our website. We have created an online application that's really straightforward, lays out the parameters of the program, lets individuals know, again, reminds individuals the criteria related to eligibility. They have to be a primary um, resident within the property and own the home. They have to meet the income guidelines up to 100% of uh, area median income. Um, they have to be willing to sign off on the compliance, as you were talking about earlier, which is a 10-year period. They they will rent the unit, meet town code in terms of having it be an affordable rental unit, have that be a permanent lease. So it can't be Airbnb, it can't be used for somebody that's you know renting on weekends, it has to be someone that will be residing in that, that unit year round. Um, and they have to commit to doing that for 10 years to have the loan be forgiven. So when an individual goes online, they'll see this information, they'll provide information like their deed to the property, they'll provide information related to their income, whether that's a W-2, their taxes, there's no income, they'll sound, sign a uh, attestation that says we have no income. Um, there's also requirements of residency, so whether it's your driver's license or your passport, voter registration, and that information can be uploaded really simply, can use your phone to take photos of those documents, upload it, and then that app application uh, gets submitted to our team. They review the application and reach out to the individual if something's missing. They took the back of the license instead of the front of the license. You know, we'll, we'll connect with the mm -hmm. homeowner there, go through the process. If they're eligible, um, we then start talking with them and taking a look at uh, the property, working with the town, again, reviewing um, the zoning requirements there, making sure that that property meets the needs if it, if it does, taking a look at what sort of accessory dwelling unit the homeowner wants to build. Is it bringing something up to code? Is it building something new? And then we'll work with bringing in an engineer, um, getting some quotes on what that uh, construction and completion of the ADA would look like. Does the homeowner have the resources in case it goes over the grant amount? You know, we will be also offering a very uh, attractive loan product to individuals, but individuals may have their own funds that they'd like to put into that. So we want to make sure that the accessory dwelling unit can be completed. The resources are there to complete that. Um, and then we'll work with the homeowner to really see that through um, and make sure that, again, the construction meets all the requirements of the town, um, that it's up to health and safety codes. Um, and then we can work with the homeowner if they'd like to find a renter. If they don't have someone that they're already thinking of renting to, um, we anticipate some individuals may rent to a family member or may rent to uh, a home health aide or someone that's working with them to provide care. Um, so we're really excited for individuals who are interested to submit their applications. They can call us if they have questions. Um, we have been talking with individuals that are interested. Um, depending on how movement goes, you know, in terms of the number of applicants that we get um, and continue to get, you know, we'll be going out into the community, talking at senior centers and other locations to provide, again, information about the program. We feel confident that based on what we've heard thus far that we'll meet that number, you know, that you're talking about, um, and hopefully we'll oh, be able do. to no, that's good. draw down additional dollars from the state. Well, that's good. So again, if somebody's interested, is it through our town website? Is there a link to your website? Yes. On, it will the also application's appear. on your website. Correct. But you can get there... Through our town website. We'll so, have a link directly so if you to just, the application. So if you just Google Town of Southampton, you get to our, you'll see our website. Correct. Yeah. And then once you open that web page, is there something prominent, like a banner of some sort that says? Yes, it will say AD, plus one ADU program. Plus one ADU program. You'll click on the link that will take you directly to the application that CDCLI um, has on their, on their site. So, Kara, uh, through your office too, if somebody is interested in participating in one of the affordable housing lotteries, I know sometimes we have homes that uh, are part of our affordability program, um, but to be on that list so that their name could be chosen in a lottery, they, they do that through your office they as well? They do that through my, through my office, yes. It's right on the town's website. There is a link to the housing registry and they can go right on there and fill out the information. They'll then be uh, put on the housing registry list. If any affordable opportunities uh, come up, they will be notified through email, whether that be existing um, um, community benefit units or newly constructed community benefit units that go through a lottery, they will be notified through that process. So I encourage everyone to, to go now, online uh, and register. What about places like Sandy Hollow or uh, Beyond Commons? Uh, the town was involved in creating those apartment complexes. Um, 
if you want to rent at one of those places, do you go through us or do you go through those locations directly? So if you're interested in one of the apartment units in either the Sandy Hollow or the Spion Commons, the um, Town of Southampton Housing Authority are, is maintaining that list. So I encourage them to call the Town of Southampton Housing Authority right now uh, to get on that list uh, for Sandy Hollow or Spion. Okay, so maybe we could um, we could show the number for your office, your office, Absolutely. as well as um, the uh, Southampton Town Housing Authority, which is a, a different office. Yes. Okay, with this program, Gwen, there are some uh, time frames that we have to meet, correct? Aggressive um, time frames, yes, yeah, correct. T tell us about that because I want to make sure we, you know, stay on track here. No, I appreciate that and we want to make sure that we hit the numbers too. The state does require, um, so this is a two-year program, clock started ticking in March. Um, as of September, we will need to be 25 percent, we will need to have um, identified 25% of eligible applicants for the first two million rounds. So that's roughly three to seven, you know, depending on if it's going to be bringing an existing unit up to code or completely new construction. So I just want to talk through how good this is. I mean, honestly, like if let's say you're a senior, you're on a fixed income, you're living in this area, super high cost of living. You got the house that made sense for your family when your kids were growing up. It's more than you need now. And you're struggling to pay your property taxes, your gasoline costs, your phone, your cable. Um, you enter this program, we build free of charge an apartment in a section of your house. You pay nothing, zero. Now you start getting an income stream, which could be what, like $2,000 yeah. a month easily, easily. $20,000 a year um, for, for the foreseeable future. And then you never have to even pay us, as long as you do this for 10 years, you don't even have to pay the government back. That's how good this is. Um, so there's going to be 20 really um, fortunate families or individuals who take advantage of this program but I hate to say like act now right or, but it, it's true in a way like if you don't take advantage of this somebody else is going to take advantage of it we only have funds to do about 20 of these accessory apartments and there is no better program than when you get the money and you don't have to give it back and you have a group like CD uh, CLI that is holding your hand through the entire process to make sure you get all the building permits and everything falls into place. And do you have any say about who you rent it to? You do, right? Absolutely. It's up to you the homeowner. Have, right. It's the other to the piece homeowner. I would just add I to mean, your... You can't discriminate, but you... Of course, right. Absolutely. Right, you have to but, adhere to a uh, But you don't have to take housing. a tenant you don't like, right? No, I mean, you, you have an opportunity, like we talked about, to rent to a family member and not charge rent, you know, or to rent to a, someone that's helping take care of you or to rent to your, you know, neighbor's child that, you know, is trying to stay in the neighborhood. Neighborhood. So there's um, great flexibility. I will say the other great aspect of the program is that the homeowner isn't paying for any of this out of pocket. So it's not as if you get reimbursed for the construction. We manage the payments to the contractors and we will be, um, you know, really streamlining those payments so we can help contractors incentivize, quite frankly, contractors to participate in the program um, by getting a lot of that payment out up and up ahead uh, before the construction is actually completed. Yeah, no, it's really a terrific program. I mean, it pays all the expenses, you know, if you need a new survey or you need an AI system or anything. That, that covers like all that. that. Covers all of it. And if you need an AI system, which is these new sanitary systems that remove nitrogen, we have a program for that, too. We do. Yeah. Yeah, we could pay for that fully. Yeah, um, under our Community Preservation Fund. Right. So it's Ex fantastic. Exactly. So we really are trying to help, and we have some great tools to help. But people do have to take advantage of it. Um, I, I want to thank both of you for coming on. I, I, I think it's important, though, once again, that they know how to find you. So Karabak, who is our Director of Housing and Community Development, uh, can be reached through the town. Um, your phone number we'll put up on the screen, also through our website, uh, Gwen O'Shea, CDC, Long Island. And we'll put your information on the screen, too, so people can find you. And then it's up to you. It's up to you um, to take advantage of this program, 
it, it also helps the town quite a bit because you're providing a one more rental apartment for somebody who's working in our community that takes one more car off the road, maybe more than one car, yeah. <laughs> you know, driving out east to try to um, supply the labor for some critical essential jobs in our community. So, uh, Gwen, thank you for coming Thank you for on. having me. Thanks for partnering with thank us. You, yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time.